بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته We have been discussing the physical description of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and thus far we've discussed the the structure of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the skin color of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the height of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the bone structure of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hair of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, amongst many other physical descriptions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, inshallah, we're still in the chapter which Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala brings forth of the physical description, but we'll focus a little bit more on the, on the, on the, on the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as told to us by Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. The Prophet ﷺ being such that not only was he outside, not only was his exterior beautiful, but his interior was beautiful as well. Not only was he beautiful on the eyes, but the Prophet ﷺ was beautiful in his character as well. He was beautiful in his character as well. Um, Ali radiallahu anhu, he was such an individual who spent time with the Prophet ﷺ from a very, very young age. So he knew the 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 ins and outs in regards to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, due to the fact that Abu Talib he did not have much wealth, so Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was taking care of Ali radiallahu anhu from a very young age. Therefore, Ali radiallahu anhu he embraced Islam at the at the young age, the tender age of ten, but due to him embracing Islam so early on. He never ascribed any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of this mentorship, because of this closeness he had with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He spent time with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before prophethood. He spent time with him after prophethood. He spent time with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone. He spent time with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in company. He spent time and he had a unique, unique relationship with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in times of happiness, in times of sadness, in times of uh, uh, the, the prosperity of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in times of struggle with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ali radiallahu anhu was constantly with him. So Ali radiallahu anhu he narrates his hadith. Let me just share the screen. So Ali radiallahu anhu he narrates his hadith in regards to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He goes on to say, Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah he goes on to narrate. حدثنا أحمد بن عبدة وعلي بن حجر وأبو جعفر محمد بن حسين وهو ابن أبي حليمة والمعنى واحد. قالوا حدثنا عيسى بن يونس and Umar ibn Abdullah, Mawla Ghufra. And we'll talk a little bit about Umar ibn Abdullah in a second. قال حدثني إبراهيم بن محمد من ولد علي بن أبي طالب. He was the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. I'm sorry, he was a grandson of Ali radiallahu anhu. قال كان علي إذا وصف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. When Ali radiallahu anhu described the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he described and said, بالطويل الممغط ولا بالقصير المتردد وكان ربعة من القوم ولم يكن بالجعد القطط ولا بالسبت كان جعدا رجلا ولم يكن بالمطهم ولا بالمكلثم وكان في وجهه تدوير أبيض مشربا أدى عجل عينين أهدب الأشفار جليل المشاش والكتد أجرد ذو مسربة ششن الكفين والقدمين إذا مشى تقلع كأنما يمشي في صبب وإذا التفت التفت معا بين كتفيه خاتم النبوة وهو خاتم النبيين أجود الناس صدرا وأستق الناس لهجة وألينهما عريكة وأكرمهم عشرة من رآه بديهة هابه ومن خالطه معرفة أحبه يقول ناعته لم أرى قبله ولا بعده مثله صلى الله عليه وسلم. This hadith is found in the Sunan of Tirmidhi as well. Uh, it is also found in the uh, Tabaqat of Ibn Sa'ad, uh, رحمه الله. However, Imam Tirmidhi رحمه الله تعالى he classifies this hadith as Hassan. 
I'm just going to use the proper terminologies and um, not get into the nitty gritty of it, but just to bring it to light. However, although Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah, he classifies this hadith as Hassan, this individual, Umar bin Abdullah, who was the freed slave of Ghufra. Due to him, there is weakness in this narration. Not only was he a problematic individual, problematic narrator, he was known to, um, to how should I explain this? He was known to skip narrators. So for example, if, I, if Abdullah heard from Abdurrahman who heard from Ahmed, Abdullah skips Abdurrahman and he says, I directly heard from Ahmed. And this obviously an individual loses his credibility over that. The muhaddithin, they regard this in action or they regard an individual who does such a thing to lose his credibility. Although, although perhaps someone like me or you may think that if it's a statement, uh, what does it matter as long as that statement is true? But no, this is how this is how cautious, this is how cautious the, the, the scholars of hadith were in regards to the statements which are attributed or which are about the Prophet. ﷺ. Nonetheless, everything which is mentioned in this narration, um, it is uh, it is um, it gains weight from the fact that other narrations which are stronger they discuss the same qualities of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nonetheless, Ali radiallahu anhu he goes on to describe the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in beginning in regards to the to the height and the stature of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the hair of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All of this we have already gone over. Moving on to what we haven't discussed, and which is discussed in this hadith, the eyelashes of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ali radiallahu anhu, remember, Ali radiallahu anhu was such an individual who spent much time with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He spent time from the Prophet, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from a young age until uh, the, Ali radiallahu anhu maturing, until Ali radiallahu anhu getting married. Ali radiallahu anhu partaking in battles with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, seeing the good times and the bad times of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, seeing the times pre-prophethood and after prophethood after being blessed with prophethood, seeing times uh, in Mecca and seeing times in Medina, seeing times, um, you, know, you know, constantly being there with the Prophet so in the, the house of the, inside the house of the Prophet and outside of the, uh, in the public, the Prophet in, uh, in, in private company and the Prophet in public company, in the public eye. Ali radiallahu observed all of that. Ali radiallahu was part and parcel with all of that. So he had a very uh, unique um, unique uh, way of describing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he goes on to first describe the eyelashes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ashfar, the Prophet Sallallahu had long eyelashes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had long eyelashes. The Prophet Sallallahu had dark eyes and he had long eyelashes. This is a quality, this is a quality until now, this is a quality of physical beauty. This is the quality of physical beauty. Uh, whether it be in a man or it be in a woman, this is a quality of physical beauty. Then he goes on to describe the, the communication of the Prophet ﷺ, and more so the personality of the Prophet ﷺ, shifting from the physical to the, to, the, to the interior of the Prophet ﷺ. He goes on to explain that the Prophet ﷺ was such that whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would talk with someone, whenever he would talk with someone, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would address that person by turning completely towards that individual. Now imagine, this is the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we're talking about. Us, when we have a particular title in our company, in our corporate life, or there's someone working for us, or we're dealing with a child, and they come from our right or they come from our left or they're talking to us from behind. We're not going to turn around towards that individual. If we do, we'll turn our head around towards that individual or we'll turn our chest around to that individual. The Prophet ﷺ was such that he turned his whole body towards that person. Regardless of who that individual was, the Prophet ﷺ showed to that individual that you are important to me. I am not, I am not, I, I, I do not have arrogance in me. 
you are an important individual to me. You are important for me. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would turn totally towards that individual. Turn totally towards that individual, giving that individual his, his due importance. Uh, Ibn Majah rahimahullah ta'ala in his sunnah, he titles the chapter, Ikramu Rajuli Jalisahu. Uh, indicating how an individual should should uh, treat and should respect and should do ikram of the individuals who are within his majlis, who are sitting with him, who he is addressing or who are addressing him, how an individual should conduct himself at while he is addressing someone or while he is being addressed, regardless of who it is, regardless of who it is. We'll get into We'll, we'll, we'll get into a few details uh, uh, towards the end of how the Prophet Sallallahu used to treat and he used to walk with, you know, the, uh, the, the people who, who, peop who, who in society had no status. The people who in society were, you know, shunned from everyone else, who weren't giving any imp given any importance, how the Prophet Sallallahu gave them importance, how the Prophet gave his hand to them and allowed them to take them around town. And he would walk with them and he would listen to them. And he would lend them an ear and he would be there for them. The Prophet never, 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 never for one second let someone think that I have arrogance in me. I, I, I'm greater than you. I'm holier than you. I'm holding you that holier than thou attitude that we have. That holier than thou attitude that we have. Or that you know, I'm too important for you and you're a nobody. You're a nobody. So I don't got to give you any importance. I don't got to hear you out. And even if I'm hearing you, I don't got to I don't got to show it to you. I don't got to turn my entire body. I don't got to respect you. The Prophet sallallahu was never like that. Ali radiyallahu anhu also discusses the seal of prophethood the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had which is situated between his shoulders. Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala he actually brings brings an entire chapter in regards to this. And we'll leave the discussion for that, inshallah, ta'ala, inshallah. He also discusses how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was extremely generous. Sorry, he was extremely generous. How the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajwadu nasi sadran. From amongst the people, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most generous. He was the most generous of people. He was the most generous of people. Uh, uh, rather, it was uh, generosity, generosity being defined. Al Jawad, huwa alladhi yu'ati bila mas'alatin, siyanatin lil akhidi min dhil sawal. Sawal. A true generous individual is not that individual that once someone asks you for something, then you give him it. No, no, no. A true generous person, and generosity actually is that you give someone before them asking because you want to save them from being the, the, from, from, from the disgracement which comes with asking. The embarrassment that comes with asking, you want to save that individual from that. So a true generous person is who? Who recognizes that this person is in need, this person needs something, and facilitates that, gives that before that person asks due to the fact that he doesn't want this individual to have to open his mouth to go through that embarrassment, to go through the, uh, the potential of being disgraced by someone or the potential of someone uh, being prideful that, you know what, yeah, you're eating because of me. This food that you have at your house, this food that you have on your plate, that's because of me. I'm facilitating that. I'm giving that. That's not a generous person. That's not a generous person. Person that asks, that's a human quality. You, you ask and you give them, you have two of something, you give them something because that person needs. No, 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 that's normal. That's normal. A true jawad, a true generous person is that person who recognizes that in your community, recognizes that in your family, recognizes that, and he facilitates that before he is even asked. And that is who the Prophet was. That is who the Prophet was. A true jawad is not a person who gives when he is asked. Rather, a true jawad is a person 
who gives even before he is asked. Even before he is asked, you don't need to ask him. You don't need to tell him that I need something, that can you please give me something? You don't need to do that. A true generous person is that individual who gives without being asked. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described by Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu anhu, ma su'ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shay'an faqala la. The Prophet ﷺ was never asked for anything in which he said no. The Prophet ﷺ never rejected. The Prophet ﷺ never said no to anything. Someone's asking him, Prophet would never say no. No did not exist in his vocabulary when someone was asking him. Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu anhu he described, he, he sang the praise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَا قَالَ لَا قَطْلُ إِلَّا فِي تَشَهُّدِهِ وَلَوْ لَتَّشَهُّدُ لَمْ تَسْمَعْ لَهُ لَا the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, outside of tashahud, outside of saying, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, outside of negating that there's none worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, outside of that la, outside of that negating, outside of that no, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never said no. The Prophet never said no. And if tashahud was not there, you would never hear the word la come out of the mouth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. Sahil bin Sa'ad radiyallahu anhu and Anas bin Malik radiyallahu anhu described the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yus'alu shay'an illa a'atahu. The Prophet was never asked for anything except for that he gave that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu narration of Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajwadu al-nasi bil-khayri wa ajwadu ma yakunu fi shahri Ramadan wa kana idha laqiyahu Jibreel ajwadu bil-khayri min al-reeh al-mursala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most generous of the people. He was the most generous. He was ajwad from the people. He was the most generous. He was the most generous of the people. And the Prophet was even more generous in the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, the Prophet was already very generous. Come the month of Ramadan, <clears throat> the Prophet was even more generous than that. <clears throat> Narration of Sahih Muslim. That. Uh, um, <clears throat> one of the companions, uh, Safwan bin uh, Umayyah, he came to ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He came to ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for something. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him a large flock of, of, of animals, whether sheep, goats, or, or, or camels. Uh, um, multiple narrations come as to what the animal was. But the Prophet ﷺ gave my entire flock, a large flock of animals. That's like someone asking you, someone asking you for something, and you have uh, you you give him a garage full of Ferraris. You don't just give him one, but you give him a garage full of Ferraris. Someone needs a a, a bed a, a, a bed to sleep on, and instead of just giving them a bed, you give them an entire mansion. You facilitate an entire mansion for them. They need a car to get from point A to point B. You don't just give them one car, but you give them the best. You give them a Rolls Royce. You give them a flock of Rolls Royces. You give them a flock of Bentleys. May you enjoy that this is yours. This is who the Prophet ﷺ was. This individual, he is given a flock of animals. He's given a flock of animals from the Prophet ﷺ. He goes back to his qawm. He goes back to his qawm. He says, Ya qawm, aslimu. O oh my people, O oh my qawm, O oh my nation, embrace Islam. فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا يُعْطِي عَطَاءً لَا يَخْشَ الْفَاقَةً For verily, Muhammad gives so much charity as if he has no fear of want. He has no fear of tomorrow. He has no fear of what we say going broke. He has no fear of losing out. And an individual who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just says that he believes in Allah to be a razaq, not just says that he believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah gives us everything but actually shows that he knows what he's talking about. He puts his money where his mouth is. He puts his 
He doesn't just talk the talk, but he walks the walk. This is a true religion. And I, and I know that because of the generosity of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He tells his people, Aslimu, Ya Qawm, Aslimu, O oh my people, embrace Islam. O oh my people, embrace Islam. O oh my people, embrace Islam. Khadija radiallahu anha, Ummul Mu'mineen. Khadija radiallahu anha. She's describing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam as she's consoling him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is in, in, uh, in the cave of Hira. He's given prophethood. Uh, uh, Iqra, he responds, I'm not, I cannot read. Ma ana biqara. He squeezed multiple times. And then eventually, Iqra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaqin iqra wa rabbuka al-akram. These several verses are revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's bestowed, he's blessed, he, 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 he is given prophethood. He goes back to his house. He does not, he's in a state of shock. He's in a state of, uh, he's shivering, he's worried. He, he, he's stressed. He does not know what has just happened. He says, Zammiluni, cover me, cover me, cover me. Khadija radiallahu anha covers him. Khadija radiallahu anha consoles him. Then she says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kalla, Wallahi, Wallahi ma yukhzik Allahu abada innaka la tasilu rahim wa tahmilu al-kal wa taksibu al-ma'adub wa tuqri al-dayf wa tu'inu ala nawaib al-haq wa tasduq al-hadith wa tu'di al-amana You are too important in the sides of Allah, sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are too important of an individual. You will never be wasted. You are too important. Why? Because of what you bring to the table. What are the qualities of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? These are the qualities. He has just given prophethood. So obviously these are the qualities of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prior to prior to being blessed with prophethood. These are the qualities inherent in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is who he is. This is who he is. She's describing the Prophet. إِنَّكَ لَتَصِلُ الرَّحِمْ وَتَحْمِلُ الْكَلْ وَتَكْسِبُ الْمَعْدُومْ وَتُقْرِ الضَّيْفِ وَتُعِينُ عَلَى نَوَائِبِ الْحَقِّ وَتَسْدُقُ الْحَدِيثِ وَتُؤْدِ الْأَمَانَ You join the ties of kinship. You join the ties of kinship. You are an individual who someone is in need. You, you help them in their need. Someone, someone is... Someone is... Someone is... Someone is... It is a faqir. Someone, someone needs what? Someone needs money. You assist them in that. You assist them in that. Someone is going through something. You are there to help them. <clears throat> you constantly tell the truth. You constantly are trustworthy. This is who you are as an individual. This is who you are as an individual. These were the qualities of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In Sahih Bukhari, Abdullah bin Abbas. Uh, uh, sorry, Abbas radiallahu anhu. It comes about him that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him so much gold, as much as he could lift, as much as he could carry, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not worried about anything else. Not worried about anything else. Didn't care about anything. These are things that doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. He had his sight focused on the akhirah. He had his sight focused on the hereafter. Someone's asking for something here. Whatever I have is yours. Whatever I have is yours. Rather, if I don't even have it, take it on my name. And I'll take care of that loan. I'll take care of that later. Uh, Imam Tirmidhi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he actually will narrate this as we go on. An incident individual came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He asked him for something. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I need something. The Prophet says, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. If I had any, I would have given it to you. I don't have absolutely anything. But you know what? Go and get whatever you want. And let people know that you've gotten it on my name. You've gotten it on my name. And I'll pay that loan whenever I get whatever I get. Whenever I get money, whenever I get any wealth, I'll take care of that account. I'll settle that account. So get whatever you need, whatever you want. Go and get that from the marketplace. Just let them know that get the money from Muhammad. Get the money from Muhammad bin Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll take care of that. Or Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, he goes on to say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why are you putting yourself through this? You don't have anything, tell the person you don't have it. You don't have, call it a day. You don't have to bend over backwards for everyone. Call it a day. Let him go. He can, he, he can get the money from elsewhere. 
as he's saying this, one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the Ansar, he says, Ya Rasulullah, anfiq wa la takhaf min dhil arsh iqlalan. O Muhammad, O Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, spend wa la takhaf min dhil arsh iqlalan. And do not worry, do not worry, do not worry of the fact and do not worry about not having. Do not worry about not having. Don't worry about that. The Prophet ﷺ responds to him by saying, Bihada umirt. That is exactly what I have been commanded to do. Then he goes on to say that in the morning and in the evening, angels come, two angels. In the morning and in the evening, they have one responsibility. Of saying, Allahumma a'ati munfiqan khalafa, Allahumma a'ati mumsikan talafa. Oh Allah, that person who gives, oh Allah, you give him a better return. Oh Allah, you give him a better return. And oh Allah, that person who does not give, mumsikan, who hoards, who does not spend, destroy his wealth. Destroy his wealth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yabna Adam, anfiq. O son of Adam, spend. O son of Adam, spend. Give. Give. What will happen? Allah will spend on you. Allah will give you. You give for the sake of Allah and Allah will give you. You give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give for you. This is who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. This is who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. Once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he was coming back from Hunayn, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is encountered by certain individuals. And he is driven or he has to retreat towards the trees. And in the trees, his cloth gets caught and they're asking and they're saying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam give us, give us, give us give us what, what belongs to us give us what belongs to us and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says فَلَوْ كَانَ لِعَدَدَ هَذِهِ الْعَضَاتِ نَعَمًا لَقَسَمْتُ بَيْنَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُونِي بَخِيلًا وَلَا كَذَّابًا وَلَا جَبَانًا that if I had, if I had camels equivalent to even the thorns in these trees, I would give them all. I would give them all. I would not keep any one of them. And then you would find me that I am not a person who hoards wealth. I'm not a person who lies. And I'm not a person who is scared. I'm not a person who hoards wealth. I'm not a person who lies. And I'm not a person who is scared of what is going to happen tomorrow. This is who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. Constantly the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is caring for others, is looking out for others, is spending upon others, is worried about others. This is who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. Even in the hereafter, on the day of Qiyamah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be worried about others, will be worried about his ummah. When the people will go to Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wasalam and ask to supplicate, ask to intercede on our behalf. And he will say, no, go to so and so and go to another messenger, go to another messenger. Each messenger will say, go to a different messenger. Finally, they will come upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everyone will be worried, nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself. The Prophet will be worried about his ummah, his ummah. That is who the Prophet, that the, we are the people who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi will be worried about then as well. We are the people who the Prophet will be worried about then as well. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, someone lifts their shirt. And they show the Prophet ﷺ that I have one stone tied to my belly because of how hungry I am. In the Battle of Ahzab, as they're digging the trenches, he lifts his shirt. 
O Prophet of Allah, I have not had anything to eat for many days. Look at my, look at, look at my stomach. I've had to tie a stone to my stomach to suppress my hunger. The Prophet ﷺ lifts his shirt and he has two stones tied. This is who the Prophet ﷺ was. The Prophet ﷺ on that day, he will fall down in sujood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be supplicating, he will be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. He will be worried about us. He would be worried about us. He would be worried about us. And this is who the Prophet ﷺ is. This is how generous the Prophet ﷺ is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad, irfa' ra'sak, lift your head. Sal tu'ata, you ask and you will be given. You ask and you will be given. Uh, you, you ask, you intercede. Uh, uh, your intercession will be accepted. Your intercession will be accepted. Then the Prophet wasallam will intercede for me and you. Then the Prophet wasallam will intercede for me and you. This is who the Prophet wasallam was. Then Ali radiallahu anhu goes on to describe the Prophet wasallam <clears throat> of how truthful he was. The Prophet amongst everyone, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in every situation, every scenario, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only spoke the truth. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only spoke the truth. Rather it was such, rather it was such, the Prophet was so trustworthy, the Prophet was so truthful, <coughs> excuse me, The Prophet was so truthful, and the Prophet was so trustworthy that when they were renovating the Kaaba, prior to the prophethood of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they narrate they they they're renovating the Kaaba, and they come to the black stone. Now, who is going to put the black stone back in its spot? Who is going to put the black stone back in its spot? Everyone wants to. Everyone wants to. But who should make the decision that which tribe is going to have the who's going to have the the uh, privilege of placing the black stone back where it belongs? As they are deciding, as they are arguing, as they are trying to decide, the Prophet وسلم, walks in. What do they say? Ibn Ibn Hisham rahimahullah, he goes on to mention in his book of Sirah. Page 197, 198 ish, if I'm not mistaken. It says, Ja al Aminu bihi. The trustworthy person is here. And we are all satisfied with what he decides. We are all satisfied with what he decides. Knowing, being known for his trustworthiness, being known for his truthfulness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he's given the command to warn people now, to warn people to invite them towards Islam. When he is told that warn your close family, start off with your close family. You have been given a responsibility, you're a prophet. You're uh, stand up and warn people. Where do you start? You start from your family. You start from those who are closest to you. The Prophet وسلم, stood up. The Prophet وسلم, called all the different qabail, all his different the, 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 the tribes which were related to him, those that were close to him. And he asked them, what do you think about me? What do you think about me? They responded, all of them, مَا جَرَّبْنَا عَلَيْكَ إِلَّا صِدْقًا We do not know anything about you, but you always tell the truth. The experience that we have with you is that you're a truthful person. We know nothing contrary to that. We know nothing contrary to that. And then eventually he invites them towards worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Lahab, he goes on to say, Tabban laka ma jama'atana illa lihada. May you be cursed. Did you gather us just for this? For this, for this what he considered foolishness? For this waste of time you've gathered us to tell us to leave our for the religion of our forefathers to leave the idols that we worship the gods that we recognize you've told us you've gathered us you've brought you you've, you've addressed us you've given this fancy speech 
<coughs> just to tell us to to for to to leave our idols you've told us and you're inviting us towards this is this why you have gathered us and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually revealed that cursing Abu Lahab and discussing his family cursing his wife but all of them all of them together they said we know nothing besides the fact that you always tell the truth you always tell the truth rather Abu Jahl said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadith of Tirmidhi he said to the قال in anna aba ali radiyallahu anhu says anna aba jahl qala lin nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna la nukadhibuka walakin nukadhibu bima ji'ta bihi fa anzala allah innahum la yukadhibunaka walakin adh-dhalimin bi ayati allah yajhadun he said to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the sworn enemy of islam Abu Jahl, known as, as, as Abu al-Hakam, amongst his people. He said to the Prophet, we do not deny you. We do not say that you are a liar, but we deny what you came with. We don't deny you, but we deny with what you came with. Because we know nothing besides the fact that you are truthful. You are truthful. It is not you that we deny, but it is we deny what you come with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed innahum la yukadhibunak. Allah revealed it is not you that they deny, but it is Allah's verses which the wrongdoers reject. Right? So even they admitted of the truthfulness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather, uh, uh, Abu Ishaq, uh, uh, Ibn Ishaq, and Imam Bayhaqi rahimahullahu ta'ala, they narrate from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, the Nadr bin Harith, he addressed the Quraysh, the leader of the, one of the leaders of the Quraysh, he addressed them. He said, قَدْ كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ فِيكُمْ غُلَامًا حَدَثًا أَرْضَاكُمْ فِيكُمْ وَأَصْدَقُكُمْ حَدِيثًا وَأَعْضَمُكُمْ أَمَانَةً حَتَّى إِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ فِي صَدْغَيْهِ الشَّيْبِ وَجَاءَكُمْ بِمَا جَاءَكُمْ بِهِ قُلْتُمْ سَاحِرْ لَا وَاللَّهِ مَا هُوَ بِسَاحِرْ That the reality is such, and he, he, he tied it up very nicely. He said, قَدْ كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ فِيكُمْ غُلَامًا, غلاما حَدَثًا أَرْضَاكُمْ فِيكُمْ That Muhammad was amongst you. Uh, he, he grew up amongst you. And you were all happy with who he was. And uh, he always, you always claim that he told the truth. And he was very, very uh, uh, trustworthy. And this is, all, this is what he was known by. Until he came with what he came, this message. And now all of a sudden you are saying he's a sahir, that he's a magician. All of a sudden you're turning on him. Wallahi, ma huwa bi sahir. There's no way possible that he's a, he's a magician. Right? Because he, he's calling them out on their double standards. Abu Sufyan. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wrote a letter to the 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 king of Rome, Hercules. And uh, he invited him towards Islam. Min Muhammad Abdullah wa Rasulihi ila hirq al-azim al-Rum. Salamun ala man attaba' al-huda. Amma ba'd fa inni ad'uuka bida'ayat al-Islam. Aslim taslim. Aslim taslim. Yu'tika Allahu ajraka marratain. Fa in tawallayta fa inna alayka ithma al-arisiyin. ويا أهل الكتاب تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم ألا نعبد إلا الله ولا نشرك به شيئا ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله فإن تولوا فقولوا اشهدوا بأننا مسلمون The letter of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to Hiraqal, to Hercules uh, Abu Sufyan he goes on to say that I was brought forth he was there for trade, he was there for business, he was there <coughs> for work with his caravan and they're all brought forth by uh, uh, to, to Hercules 
and Hercules, he poses a few questions to them. And he says, what is, um, what is his family status amongst you? And he responds by saying he belongs to a good and noble family amongst us. He belongs to the Quraysh. And, he resp and then Hercules asks, has anyone amongst you ever claimed the same meaning to be a prophet before him? And he responds, no. And he mentioned, asks many, many questions to Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan says, by Allah, had I not been afraid of my companions labeling me as a liar, I would have not spoken the truth about the Prophet ﷺ. I could have lied, and I, and I would have lied had I not been afraid that people would start calling me a liar. Of the things that he asked Abu Sufyan, who at that time was not a Muslim. Abu Sufyan was not a Muslim at that time. He asked, the, he asked Abu Sufyan, who is this individual? What is the character of this individual? And he has to respond that he's a truthful individual. He is known to be a trustworthy individual. This is who the Prophet was. Ali radiallahu anhu goes on to describe the Prophet sallallahu The Prophet sallallahu was very gentle in his nature. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi was very gentle in his nature. I haven't looked over the translation of this, uh, uh, what is being shared in the screen, um, but the, the few glimpses that I've gotten, uh, it's been translated very vaguely and obviously um, uh, due to necessity. Um, but the purpose of sharing the screen is merely so that we can follow along as we go through the narrations. Um, <clears throat> Some of the terms are translated very vaguely. But Ali radiallahu anhu goes on to describe him, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very soft and gentle in his, um, in his character. In his character, he was very gentle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنَ حَوْلِهِ that, oh Muhammad, due to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> you are compassionate with them. You are lenient with them. You are soft with them. You are gentle with them. You have a gentle personality with them. Because of the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given this quality from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Had you not been such, had you been harsh, had you been rude mannered, had you been hard hearted, everyone would have run away from you. Everyone would have run away from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Describing the personality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, undoubtedly. A messenger has come to you amongst your myth. Describing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is such that whatever what, whatever, whatever you go through, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam feels that very weighty upon him. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the epitome of empathy. There being a difference between sympathy and empathy, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi had the epitome of empathy. What you are going through, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi would feel that. He would feel that, not just not just see that, not just address that, be sympathetic towards that, but a level above that, be empathetic. That's who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Excuse me. Harisun <clears throat> alaykum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hiris is typically used uh, um, when a person has desire uh, for, for wealth, right? A person is uh, greedy for wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Harisun alaykum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had that same desire that we have for wealth. He had that for your betterment. With the believers, he's ra'uf and he's rahim. Prophet is told, The Prophet is told, 
فاذا التي بينك فاذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوه كانه ولي حميم the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said about him by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was told abu hurairah radiyallahu anhu anhu says that uh, uh, people said that why don't you curse the the mushrikeen why don't you curse the 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 people who who ascribe partners with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the people who are constantly hurting us why don't you curse them and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam responds by saying inni lam ab'ath la'anan wa inna ma bu'ithtu rahmatan i've not been sent as a person who curses people as a person who invokes curses wa inna ma bu'ithtu rahmatan rather i have been sent exactly the opposite exactly for the opposite this is who the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as he is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is asked um by aisha radiyallahu anha aisha radiyallahu anha asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the wife of the prophet and she asked that ya rasulullah hal ata alayka yawmun kana ashadd min yawmi uhud was there a day which was more severe for you more difficult for you than the day of uhud The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responds by saying that I have experienced from from my people the hardest treatment um uh, that I met was the day of Aqaba. And he goes on to say long story but he goes on to mention the incident of Ta'if. He goes on to mention that people rejected him and therefore he went to Ta'if, the city of Ta'if to invite the people of Ta'if towards Islam. the people of taif rejected the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the people of taif rejected the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam retreated from the city left from the city the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is running away from the city the people the, the children and the people in the street are set after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to stone the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to harm the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as all of this is happening the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stops at a garden seeks shade and the angel jibril comes along with the angel who was in charge of the mountains and he tells the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya muhammad inna allah qad sami'a qawla qawmik qawmika lak wa ana malikul jibal wa qad ba'athani rabbuk that allah has heard everything and allah has i'm the i'm the angel who is in charge of the mountains and allah has sent me for you and whatever you command me i will do whatever you will command me i will do the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responds by saying no i do not want anything i do not want you to crush the people in between these two mountains rather i want i hope that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will produce from their descendants from their offsprings such people who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will not ascribe partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is who the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was this is who the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was anas bin malik radiyallahu anhu says hadith sahih bukhari he says kanat amatan amatan min amaa al madinati ta'khudh bi yadi rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa tantaliq bihi haythu sha'at the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was so gentle that the 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 little girls of medina would come to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam grab a hold of the hand of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and walk with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wherever they so pleased wherever they so wanted the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allowed that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would walk with them they would drag the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with his hand they would walk with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam holding his hand throughout the streets of medina and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would never say anything this is who the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was rather it was such that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of the one of one of the one of the ladies of medina uh, who was known to be a little out of her mind she suffered with uh, uh, um uh, um issues related to her mental health she came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam she said to the prophet i have a very very something very important for you 
and please come with me, please come with me. And she's, she's frustrated. She's, she's going, she, she, she's a little hysterical, <coughs> not having full control over what she's saying. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ya Umm Fulan, unzuri ila, ila, ila sikaki shi'ti hatta aqdi lak, laki hajatik. فَخَلَا مَعَهَا فِي بَعْضِ الطُّرُقْ حَتَّى فَرَغَتْ مِنْ حَاجَتِهَا The Prophet ﷺ said, O oh, mother of so-and-so, whatever street you want to take me, grab my hand and take me. And the Prophet ﷺ went with her. However, she took the Prophet ﷺ, he followed her. He, she held the Prophet ﷺ's hand and they walked through the streets of Medina. The Prophet ﷺ trying to facilitate whatever she wanted, whatever she needed. Easily the Prophet ﷺ could have easily, he could have easily given this task to anyone else. Easily he could have done such. But this is who the Prophet ﷺ was. The Prophet ﷺ constantly, those who were needy, those who were orphans, those who were needy, those who were widows, the Prophet will constantly be assisting them. The Prophet will constantly be helping them. The Prophet ﷺ was such that he never took revenge for himself. A hadith found in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Man taqaman nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nafsihi qaddu. Whoever wants to do whatever to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet never took personal revenge upon them. The Prophet ﷺ was said, ma daraba shay'in bi yadihi qaddu. The Prophet ﷺ never hit anyone with his hand. Whether it be a female, whether it be a slave, whether it be a servant, whether it be anyone, the Prophet never physically assaulted anyone. The Prophet never physically hurt anyone. This is who the Prophet ﷺ was. Anas radiallahu anhu says to the Prophet ﷺ once, Prophet ﷺ tells him to do something. He says, Wallahi la adhabu. Wallahi, I will not do it. Wallahi, I will not go. What he meant in his heart was that I will go, but he was just saying this. As a child, he was saying this to the Prophet ﷺ. Kids, act up. This is normal. But he thinks to himself, he knows that in his heart that he's actually going to do it. So he leaves the house to go and do the task that he's supposed to. And as he's going... He sees children playing in the street and he stops and he watches them. As he's watching them, he feels a hand on his shoulder and he sees the Prophet And the Prophet asks him, did you go do what I told you to do? And he's smiling. And he says, no, I didn't. But I'm going to go now and do it. And the Prophet does not say anything. The Prophet does not yell at him, does not scream at him, does not hit him, does not discipline him harshly. The Prophet ﷺ just smiles at him. This is who the Prophet ﷺ was. This is how gentle the Prophet ﷺ was. From these hadith, we get a good grasp of the personality of the Prophet ﷺ. Ali radiallahu anhu also goes on to say, وَأَكْرَمُهُمْ عِشْرَةً وَأَكْرَمُهُمْ عِشْرَةً In other narrations, the word instead of a عِشْرَة, it comes a عَشِيرَة. The word comes instead of a عِشْرَة, it comes a عَشِيرَة. <coughs> Excuse me. It would mean that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ashira family, Qabila, nation, uh, where he belongs from. The Prophet is from the best, the most noble of families. All of this meaning is correct, but the more uh, uh, correct meaning in this context would be Akramuhum Aisharatan in this particular. A narration of Imam Tirmidhi, which he brings in his Sunan and he brings in his uh, Jami' as well. It comes, وَأَكْرَمُهُمْ عِشْرَةً In Mishkat al-Masabih, in other books it says, وَأَكْرَمُهُمْ عَشِيرَةً The more authentic, the more close, the more the better meaning would be, وَأَكْرَمُهُمْ عِشْرَةً uh, From this, Mu'ashara comes as well. Uh, a society. The Prophet ﷺ was the best in society. The Prophet ﷺ was such, and, and we realize this in, from, from the narrations that we read, the Prophet ﷺ told us how to deal with every type of relative, every type of individual we encounter in society. Whether it be our parents, 
وقد الله سبحانه وتعالى even mentions actually directly وقضى ربك الا تعبدوا الا اياه وبالوالدين احسانا الله سبحانه وتعالى says وصينا الانسان بوالديه حسنا الله سبحانه وتعالى says وصينا الانسان بوالديه حملته امه وهنا على وهن الله سيد وصينا الانسان بوالديه احسانا حملته امه كرها ووضعته كرها الله سبحانه وتعالى constantly is reminding us about the importance and the relationship that we have with our with our parents رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم is asked who 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 should i be most and i'm saying in my own words to 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 explain the the message behind it who should i be um most dutiful to who should i love most who should i be most dutiful to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says your mother your mother your mother then your father rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ridha rabbi fi ridha alwalidi that the that the the happiness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you lies in the happiness of your father your father is happy with you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you your father is upset at you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us how to deal with our parents allah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also tells us how to deal with our relatives how to deal with our relatives tying the the um uh the the tie of kinship joining the tie of kinship joining the tie of family um going out of your way for that those who cut your the tie of kinship you go out of your way and you go and join that tie of kinship rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that um an individual um an individual who who ties the ties of kinship who joins the ties of kinship the result of that is such that it does two one it increases you in your rizq and number two it increases you in your age one it increases you in your rizq and number two it increases you in your age the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the person who prays salah the person who gives zakah the person who joins the ties of kinship those individuals those actions lead an individual towards jannah and the individual who cuts the ties of kinship cuts the ties of family though that action is such that individual is such and that action is such that it takes an individual away from jannah takes an individual away from jannah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us how to deal with those who are younger than us how to deal with our children how to be merciful towards them rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is kissing his grandsons and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is told by aqra bin habis that you, you, you you're doing such a thing and it's something which is considered according to aqra bin habis at that time something which is not manly something which is not manly the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said malla yarham la yurham that individual who does not who does not have mercy is not shown mercy by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him aw aw amliku in naza'a allah fi qalbik ar-rahma What should I do if Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala took mercy away from your heart? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us how to deal with those who are those who do, who who are who are widows, those who are orphans, those who do not have much in 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 uh, in, in life, who do not have much money, who are fuqara. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ana wa kafir al-yatim kahatain." Me me and those individuals who take care of the orphans are like this in Jannah. Any put together his two fingers he put together his two fingers meaning we are going to be inseparable in jannah we are going to be together in jannah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as-sa'i 'ala al-arma 'ala al-armalati wal-masakin kal-mujahidin fi sabil Allah aw kal-ladhi yaqum al-layl wa yasum an-nahar that individual who takes care of the widows that individual who takes care of the orphans they will be they are like those individuals who fight in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who stand up all night in worship and who stay who who fast all day that is their status rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us how to deal with each and every individual that we can encounter this is who the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was this is who his this is what his character was how to deal with how, how to deal with our wives rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khayrukum khayrukum li ahli wa ana khayrukum li ahli the best amongst you is that individual who is the best 
to his wives, who is the best to his to 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 to, to his spouses. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Stausu bin nisa ikhira." That I am I I I am giving you wasiyah. I'm advising you. I I I am I'm I'm giving you advice. I'm giving you wasiyah to treat your women's right. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Said once, لَقَدْ طَافَ بِأَهْلِ مُحَمَّدِ النِّسَاءُ كَثِيرٍ أَيَشْكُونَ أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ لَيْسَ أُولَٰئِكَ بِخِيَارِكُمْ That many, once females came to the Prophet ﷺ and they complained to the Prophet ﷺ that our husbands do not treat us properly. Our husbands do not treat us right. Our husbands do not treat us right. And the Prophet ﷺ got very angry. And he addressed this publicly. He said, that females have came to me and they have complained about how you guys treat them. And he goes on to say, These people are not the best from amongst the people. Rasulullah said, That individual, Akmalul Mu'minina Imanan, who has the most complete iman are those individuals who have the best character and who treat their families in a soft and a gentle manner who treat them in a soft and a gentle manner the prophet sallallahu taught us how to deal with everyone how to deal with in society how to deal in our business transactions how to deal in our personal transactions how to deal with our personal relationships our business relationships the prophet والسلام, taught us all of that Prophet Ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us all of that. Ali radiyallahu anhu saying, "Wa akramuhu ma'ishratan." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the most noble in character in every regard. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is then described by Ali radiyallahu anhu and running out of time. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam described by Ali radiyallahu anhu then in regards to his man ra'ahu badihatan habahu. وَمَنْ خَالَتَهُ مَعْرِفَةً أَحَبَّهُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has described such that the Prophet was such an individual that if an individual saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the first time because of the great personality and because of the respect that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had from amongst the people because of the awe-inspiring personality, a person would be overcome with a feeling of, of profound respect. Rather, it was such that people, they described the Prophet wasallam such that if you ask me to describe the Prophet wasallam. Uh, Amr ibn Asr radiyallahu anhu, uh, hadith of Sahih Muslim, he goes on to say, وَلَوْ سُئِلَتْ أَنْ أَصِفَهُ مَا, أطق ما, ما أَطَقْتُ لِأَنِّي لَمْ أَكُنْ لَأَمْلَأَ عَيْنَيَّ مِنْهُ If you ask me to describe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I cannot do so because I never had the audacity. I never had the, audacity is a strong word, I never had the, the courage due to the respect that I had and the awe that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the awe I had of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I never had the ability to just stare at him I never had the ability to just stare at him but then Ali Radiallahu Anhu goes on to say that that person who would spend time with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that person who would spend time in the person in the in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he would come to love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would come. He would be overcome with a feeling of love, with a feeling of profound respect of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is who the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was. One of the companions. He goes on to say, um, I believe it was Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu. فَلَا يَرْفَعُ أَحَدٌ مِّنْهُمْ إِلَيْهِ بَصَارَهُ إِلَّا أَبُو بَكَرْ وَعُمَرْ رضي الله عنهما وَيَتَبَسَّمَانِ إِلَيْهِ وَيَتَبَسَّمُ إِلَيْهِما That no one would lift their gazes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam beside Abu Bakr and Umar. They would smile at the Prophet and the Prophet would smile at them. 
they would smile at the Prophet and the Prophet would smile at them. The first impression that people would have because because of the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would be that the Prophet a feeling of awe, a feeling of uh, speechlessness, a feeling of, uh, um, you know, if an individual, someone that he really, really looks up to, and he finally meets him for the first time, or meets her for the first time, and his jaw hits the floor, and he has no idea what to do. And then when things settle down, that interaction just seems like a blur. That seems like a fuzz in your memory. That's how that initial interaction would have been. But then when an individual spends time with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when an individual spends time with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he realizes how, how much he loves the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how great the qualities, how much respect the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has. Then Ali radiallahu anhu goes on to say, uh, which we already went over before and we'll conclude with what Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu anhu said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam undoubtedly he was the most beautiful in personality. He was the most beautiful in his appearance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability as we are learning about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We get a sense of, of uh, we become encouraged to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In turn, when we follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once Allah loves us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive our sins on condition that we follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And once our sins are forgiven, once we achieve the, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what, what, what more do we desire? What more do we need? Jannah is ours. Jannah is ours. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice upon this, to bring into our lives. Jazakallahu khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.